Jim. Thanks, man. No problem. Thanks Good for inviting you, me out here. Uh, we're at his nice, beautiful space in uh, Sanford, Florida called Unfoil Events. And how he got here and his journey to get to where he's at today is highly documented. And there's a brand new exhibit at the Orlando Regional Museum in downtown Orlando. Orange County History yeah, so, Center. Yeah, there's a brand new exhibit in the Orange County uh, History Center. History Center. So, Jim, thanks again. No problem. Um, how'd you get here, man? What, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, when I graduated college, I got tricked into coming to Florida to help a family member out open the biggest nightclub in the South. And uh, I was a punk rock promoter in high school and college. And I came down here and met the local record store owners. And they're like, hey, you know, what you were doing up there, we could really use, you know, doing some shows down here. And I teamed up with a bunch of guys. And we started in 1983. We did Black Flag, Dead Kennedys, Fear. And it just kept growing. And there was this huge need in the state of Florida because most bands would uh, come to Atlanta and then cut across to New Orleans. So, and then I worked day job at restaurants. And then at, do, at night I was doing the concerts. So you were what, in your early 20s? I was 21. So you're 21, you come down from up north. Yep, I graduated college. You, co you come down to Florida. And all of a sudden, it's funny, you told me this story, you find yourself right in the middle of really the indie rock and punk rock scene by what? You threw a huge party that was supposed to be a birthday? Yes, and then, and at, it ended at up the being a 70s Lebanese concert. Hall that yeah. uh, Mark Nijam owned, attorney. And, uh, and it, it was Tell us what happened. Tell it, us what well, happened. it was a Dead Kennedys. And uh, I just booked it because back then you would do them in American Legion halls because there's no bars or restaurants you could do these type of shows at. So... I booked it. I was hoping that 200 people showed up and 2,000 people showed up. And the place was mayhem and the place got torn to pieces. It was $3,500 in damage, cops, ambulances. It was, it was really, really, really bad. And it was $3,500 in damages. I paid it, still made a little bit of money, but it was a notorious like way to kickstart Orlando's punk rock scene. It is. And when you think about it, I did some studying on, you know, the spread that you guys have up at the exhibit. And it said that you combine like, you know, your artists there of the, you know, the, the five artists that are there. I can't wait to meet them. They combine so many different elements of pop culture inside of the style that they did that they said it brought a lot of energy. It brought a lot of aesthetic and it brought a lot of artistry to the city inside of the punk rock theme that we hadn't seen before. Well, my Thomas Scott, who I started with, we were very influenced by 4AD records and um, factory records. And the way they did this thing was like an oxymoron. The band was this, but they would do these crazy and beautiful images of this. And it would just kind of tell a story. So we really wanted the art and the posters to coincide with the story of the show, no matter how hardcore it was, or if it was the Indigo Girls or Tori Amos or Black Flag, Fear. And we kind of covered the gambit of music. Yeah. And uh, it was real exciting to get the artists involved and get their own creativity. And we wanted the people to come in for a full like experience. Yeah, absolutely. And that turned into a full career, right? So then you went, obviously you owned some bars, restaurants, mm -hmm. and you did a lot of promoting. Yep. Uh, you had a couple of bands as well that you guys managed throughout the years. We, I right? never really would manage bands, okay. but we would get money from a show and I would put out a record. And basically the band and I would be like partners. Okay. So the minute we got the money back on the record, we would just split whatever it was. And we never sold enough albums to really make it a dent. Yeah. But it was a documentation of the time and the era. No, and I think that's awesome, man. And when you think about, you know, this podcast and us launching it with you guys, thank you very much for, for doing this with us. What do you think the real key to success for you back then? You had so many, you had, you had a couple of decade run of bringing real fresh music and creativity to Orlando. What do you think your, uh, how can you accredit your success? I, I think like anybody that owns their own business or is an entrepreneur, you have to have this massive fearlessness and instinct. And a lot of stuff, I really didn't have the playbook on how to do a punk rock concert for 2000 people. <laughs> so you just kind of like experience it, learn from your mistakes and move forward. So even when we do, we do a wine festival, we sit down and we go, what do we do right? What do we do wrong? What, do, what could we change? Whether it's the pricing of the ticket, the, the person's experience that came to it, we, you know, we love the feedback. And I think anything, when you're a restaurant owner, a bar owner, any kind of business owner, if you own a lumber yard, you want that customer experience. We just opened and launched this place uh, two days ago. And the biggest thing is my, myself and my two partners, we're on the floor, we're talking to people. What do you think? You know, the pricing, is it a little too high, a little too low? And you kind of find that sweet spot in business. And that's the biggest thing when you, when you talk to, to entrepreneurs, it's very 
kind of terrifying because you're going into the abyss. 100%. Or instead of just having that kind of nine to five situation, which, you know, a lot of people do. And, and a lot of people like me, I just, I can't do that. Right. Because they're always like, well, you're here seven days a week. Well, I don't feel like I'm working. Right. I feel like it's part of the creativity of what I'm doing. And I like that. You know, and, and I was uh, going to ask you that. How do you know when you have that? Well, for a lot of entrepreneurs, how do you? I don't think you ever know when you have it. Right. I mean, I'm 61. I, think when you're I don't think you death. ever, because this is a new venture. I've never done retail, and I, I'm super excited because it's always a new adventure. When you open up a restaurant or you did this, I opened up a shoe store downtown called Left Right Left. It was a disaster. <laughs> uh, I didn't know you have to carry every size of shoe, and I didn't know that you know what this was and. So you learn from your mistakes and don't be afraid. Thinking about all that angle is, angle is business. Whether it's he a punk success. rock promoter, right. or whether you're a restaurant guy, or whether your stuff like this thing here is really, really scary. Only because I have no idea how much we're going to sell. I was shocked. Yeah. You know, yesterday we sold 300 bucks. Yeah. But it is what it is. And they're like, well, why would you be open seven days a week? Why don't you open five days a week? I'm like, no. I want to. I'm going to pay rent. And every day I met, I mean, I met some really cool people and some cool yeah. people that didn't buy anything. They just want to come in, look around, get a vibe for it. And then we ask questions. What else could we sell? Right. What are we missing? So, you know? so one thing in the retail space that I saw that will help when someone comes, have stuff like you did the other day, put something in their hands. I'm yeah. not kidding. When they come in, yeah. put something in their hands. Or if they're looking for something, have your reps literally put yeah. it in their hands. They teach them that at all the like Louis yeah. Vuitton, all the high-end places. Well, well, Bunky was retail, and she said the biggest thing is to Within prevent the first... theft, to prevent theft, yep. and to prevent uh, I mean, a good experience is just engaging them. How you yeah. doing? Where like you that. from? Are you, are you local here? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel all natural doing that. We just yeah. took over a coffee shop. I've never made a cup of coffee in my life. Yeah. And the first day there, the girl walked out. She was pissed off that we were taking over. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna figure this out. So I, I never worked. I never worked an espresso machine before. So the first day in your coffee shop, straight up walks out, and now you're like, yep. Here and I, I am. sat there for nine hours, and people would walk up, and I go, How do you like it? It's just like bartending. If you don't know how to bartend, rum and coke. You know, yeah. it's it's Whiskey not rocket science. <laughs> and so I, I would just Make ask them, and yeah, <laughs> and I, you know, I, yeah, I fucked up a bunch, but yeah. it was fun. You're interacting with them. Just don't. Just don't have a fear factor. Don't be like scared. That's why we had a new employee last night. She's 16. Yeah. It was her first day. She did a phenomenal job. Yeah. You know, she learned this stuff. You common know, sense of it's about communicating. Lesson. Everything's about communicating, 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 communicating to your employees, communicating. And that's why I think the biggest problem in, in, in work is people that don't have. Um, if you look at that one television series, which I've never seen, but where he goes undercover and they go in there and yeah. they learn so much. Right. Because these guys are telling the straight undercover shit. Undercover billionaire. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But I'm yeah. just saying that you watch some of those episodes and it's, 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 it's tear jerking real. because yeah. these people get so above the law that they don't even understand, you know, in my restaurants, I always watch the dishes. I always got in and cooked with them because yeah. you're in the respect and then they don't steal from you and they they'll show up on time because they they think you how much you care about them yeah you absolutely know? i had a small period of time i was talking to my buddy on the way over here i led a group of marines probably five or six marines before we went into combat right and they were intel marines so a few of them would go into combat the rest of them would stay back on the base and we kind of designed the programming around who can go into combat who can't only time i ever led anybody other than that i was always on my own they're like i would get trained up and schooled up and they would just send me into operations because i could pretty much go where everybody yeah. went and I was talking to my buddy today because I'm running into another leadership challenge with one of our other companies. And he's like, look, man, this is, you know, not everybody's going to be on that same page. You yeah. got to, you, you know, there's different ways you got to be able to communicate and do that. So that's part of my own evolution and growing too. So it's interesting that you say it. But, well, thank you. Uh, we heard a little bit about your story. We appreciate it. Um, please check us out. You know, we're going to be everywhere where podcasts are available. Please like us and share us on all social media channels and subscribe to our podcast.